All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Culture Wave Media Network. My name is Mark Alcabine. I'll be one of your hosts today. I'm joined by Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. And we are going to be talking about the most talked about animated movie out right now, and probably the most critically acclaimed movie out yeah. right now, The Wild Robot, D DreamWorks' most recent film by visionary animation writer Chris Sanders, and starring Lupita Nyong'o and Pedro Pascal, which... Vinny didn't even know Pedro Pascal was in this movie yeah, until I, after. <laughs> he was completely, like, I did not recognize his voice at all until the credits started rolling. Yeah, no, he was great in this movie. Everyone was great in this movie. This movie itself was great. And mm. all of the critical acclaim, all of the audience scores are well-founded because I absolutely love this movie. It hit all of the emotional beats. The animation style was beautiful. The score by Chris Bowers was incredible i was mm. shocked at how amazing this score was i was like this score is so grand and epic yeah. like why is this in like this very touching story but it was it, mm. it worked so well Vinny, i don't even know how you feel about this movie because mm. we just came in here we went yeah. right to recording how do you feel about the wild robot yeah i i enjoyed it i i, th I think i might have not enjoyed it as much as you yeah. or others online people are claiming I mean, it might be recency bias, but people are saying, like, this is the best DreamWorks movie that has come out. Like, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but I did significantly enjoy this. It was This was much better than just good in my book. This was mm -hmm. a great movie. And like you prefaced, it is it, it, it is emotional. It's wholesome. It's great. Some great, just beautiful messaging. It's a cute movie. It's mm -hmm. great for children and uh, mature audiences alike i enjoyed it i think i think overall i i had little gripes about the mm -hmm. film but yeah no i could i could definitely agree with you that this isn't like a revelation in the, in the animated space it's yeah. a great movie it's an awesome time i think it's one of those rare occasions where this movie probably hits a lot harder for adults than it will for children because of its themes of parenthood. And mm -hmm. I know that after this movie, I told my mom, I was like, mom, you would love this movie. Yeah. You would absolutely eat this movie up. So I give it a lot of props for being a movie that not only will satisfy kids, but will definitely satisfy the parents that take them there. Mm -hmm. And if you go by yourself as a parent, that's good too. Cause we, we encourage single, uh, single movie going experiences. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the animation I, I really loved, the photorealism in the robot, but the maybe less perfect animation of the of the animals and then the the beautiful painted backgrounds that, mm. you know, kind of accentuate the the wilderness. And I just thought that's such a great it's such a great thing to see when animation isn't just like that cookie cutter, very clean, blobby stuff that you see from DreamWorks and yeah. and Disney as well. Nowadays, I, I love when animation is is pushing um, or the animation is pushed to a new a new level. Um, you know, we, I talked about on the Transformers One review uh, last week. You know, it's a different animation style, which I just appreciate when it's it's not the same as everything else. Um, anything to say about the animation? Anything that you noticed in the animation that maybe I didn't cover? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's overall very beautiful. I loved how vibrant the film felt, and I loved how just absolutely it, it knew what it was doing too. Like, yeah. but it was perfect. It did it these really grand, uh, beautiful shots very well. You know, when the robot uh, Roz is first encounters this tree filled with uh, butterflies, yeah. beautiful shots there. There's a lot of great usage of light, particularly spotlight within the darkness of it all. I Just the animation there looked very stellar, some great cinematography. And another thing specifically when the within the animation that i adored uh avoiding spoilers for now unless we want to go into spoilers but um you can go for it <laughs> okay bad, bad. so diving into spoilers <laughs> during the climax of the film when yeah the 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 forest is on fire mm -hmm. i thought that was beautiful it yeah. was so it's not an outlandishly, like, I guess you could say, avant-garde fire, you mm -hmm. know, but the use of how it's more pinkish red right. rather than an orangish red, it just made it pop for me. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is 
it, it, something in my brain it was just itching that itch, yeah you know? yeah i'm curious if they're kind of leaning into that maybe like that futuristic color palette where i usually see those really bright pinks bright mm. blues especially when uh roz lights up like she has like yellow blue and pink like those are the main colors you see yeah so maybe just kind of drawing on that futuristic um scale of things uh the music hmm. for for me i i was i was leaving the theater and i that theme that theme that you hear throughout it it just stuck with me and i i, I don't think it's too crazy to say but i think this is one of the best like motifs or themes that i've heard in an animated score in a very long time if ever i mean you know we're dating back to like lion king Hans yeah. zimmer but how did you feel about the music overall yeah i i for me it wasn't anything and, and this might be a controversial opinion i wasn't like floored by it but i did really like how you mentioned uh before how grand it felt mm -hmm. and how just very pleasantly and, and gracefully it went about these very epic scenes right like that scene I mentioned before where Roz encounters these butterflies or when Roz is helping out the the forest uh, during the blizzard. And it is has this very graceful mm. epicness to it that yeah. I really appreciated. Um, but overall, I think for me, the reason why I wasn't too in... I, don't get me wrong. This is an incredible score. But the only reason I didn't like in love with it is because there was still like, I felt like it was missing an element of, I don't want to say originality, but mm. something that makes it stand out. Sure. Yeah. Know? No, and that's fair. I, I It definitely has those elements of How to Train Your Dragon and that score. Um, I just, I was just taken by the drums. Like the drums mm. are so in the forefront of this and you know like you said there's very it's a very basic story but those moments where you know bright bill takes his first flight and there's that whole migration scene like a seemingly basic scene is just like blown out of proportion by this over the top score and i think it's just like with the animation this beautiful just wide shot of all of these goslings in the air at the same time and the fall color palette it was just just the whole mm. thing, I was just like, I was in awe. Yeah. I was like, yes, this is this is animation right here. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's that's fair to say that it, it wasn't, you know, the most create like the most unique score ever. I definitely agree. It's not on like the Oppenheimer or like Dune where it's like something sure. you've never heard before. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I totally understand that. Um, when it comes to the themes of this, um, what I really like is when these animated movies or any movie really has multiple themes that you can take away from it you know you mm. can take the parenthood theme um you could take you know life isn't easy theme like you have to work for it and life's not going to be fair to you um finding your own family like fink you know we never get his full backstory and i appreciate that they don't have like a exposition feel bad for me dump uh he kind of just implies what might have happened in the past mm. um so i really appreciate that what themes really stood out to you or really like spoke to you when when you were watching this yeah i i guess a, a more quote-unquote esoteric theme that might have popped up uh that i or just a uh, something that was not at the forefront and of the film but if they were to make a sequel to this might be at the forefront but the theme of uh corporate cor corporatism mm -hmm. and the i guess overall kind of uh capital nature and capitalist nature of right. things because we see how raws is a a product of mm -hmm. of that of of this cor big corporation mm -hmm. who is and then we see uh, later in the film that this headquarters of this corporation are you then then they're very much the antagonist of the film as well right they are using the robots and they're they have this like huge huge like mass uh produced farms mm -hmm. and it's something almost out of like a dystopian even though it is a kid's film and even though it is bright and colorful 
it is out of like a dystopian almost like the matrix in right, a sense yeah. where this uh, almost evil corporation in a sense is very uh, capitalist in nature has taken over and has now right. just marketized the entire world and and everything that kind of revolves around them benefiting their money right yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not i might be reaching here uh, no i don't think you're too but, far off uh yeah. i i very much got the um that vibe because there's inevitably inevitably going to be uh comparisons between this movie and wally like it's just oh, yeah. it's just inevitable and i think rightfully so because i do think this movie draws a lot of themes and ideas from wally which is why i can't say it's like the best animated movie ever because i don't think it's fully original i think it tells its story in a fantastic way but i do you know get the sense that you know there is that wally angle of the humans becoming lazy and needing these like assistants to do everything for them the robots doing everything for them and i didn't know if they were going to go like an environmental route because they were in nature and we see the humans uh in wally obviously they destroyed the planet and then yeah. they left so i wasn't sure if they were going to go that environmental route where you know humans had destroyed like certain parts of the world and this was maybe like one isolated thing left and then Roz goes there and then they have to you know take all the resources from there maybe that's something they do in the future but um I definitely agree there's that dystopian future feel that they could definitely move to in the future I mean we have robots that shoot lasers I mean that's 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 pretty telling about the society if you have like death robots yeah, running around yeah. so I don't think you're off there and 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 yeah to comment on that too even from a a nature um kind of pro progressive nature perspective of the film where it it comments on how how little regard uh, uh little regard these corporations i don't even want to say but or, or just them but us as humans little regard we have for the natural habitat of mm -hmm. of animals and wildlife right. because though those robots they come in there messing everything up mm -hmm. and they're harming and even even when the goose come to find shelter yeah they are like that all right yep start killing all them yeah. like like it, it's really sad to see you know because they're there's some cute little goose they're and, just trying to migrate exactly to migrate. exactly and uh, they and then even at the end of how little regard they have where it's like all right just explode the robots oh f uh force is on fire ah, yeah whatever. whatever yeah <laughs> exactly so i think that was really telling uh i think something that although although kids may not consciously pick up on it uh compared to more mature audiences it is a good similar to wally a good message to put in mm -hmm. for younger audiences you know for to sure. value so nature and, and wildlife and, and whatnot mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh another thing that you kind of reminded me of is just um going against your programming like mm. they say it's a very um it's very much laced throughout the film you know all these animals are programmed to fight protect themselves attack anything that comes near them and i think that's a theme in itself you know in life you know people around you aren't going to help you out just because you're new or something like that like mm -hmm. they're most people are out for themselves and you know this movie kind of preaches this message of kindness of going against that animalistic reptilian brain programming and i thought that was really powerful yeah. i don't I don't necessarily love how all the animals sing Kumbaya at the end because like yeah. the movie makes so many jokes in the beginning about just nature, you know, you're like kids die, like you get eaten, like it's just a part of the world. And then by the end, they're all like, oh, I'm not going to eat you. And I'm like, well, what's the bear going to eat now? Like, is the bear not going to eat? So yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't love the end, like that message in the end, but I think everything else leading up to it made a lot of sense yeah no i that was my literal same exact thought process of like it's the bear gonna, what's the bear gonna eat is, i mean he can live off fish i guess <laughs> now we're saying fish don't matter now we're saying fish don't matter. Oh, yeah unfortunately <laughs> no but uh but yeah no i 100 percent agree i think that overall it's just such a it, it is a powerful film and it's just a really beautiful film you know wholesome beautiful those are like the top words that 
I would use heartfelt, another yeah. word that I, w- I would use to describe this this film. And uh, moving moving kind of on to something that's been on top of my mind, and you talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but the voice cast, mm. like Lu- Lu- Lupita Nyong'o does an incredible job here. And but my favorite, <laughs> and someone who I didn't even know was Fink, but was Pedro Pascal. Mm-hmm. I. I don't know. For some reason, now looking and watching videos right before this, I now I'm like, oh, of right. course that's Pedro. <laughs> but for some reason, I had no clue. And that is a testimony to how I saw this character first and not the person behind it. You know? Right. Yeah. It wasn't like a marketing thing. Like we have Pedro Pascal in the yeah. movie. It was just his voice was right for this role. And uh, yeah, I totally agree. The, the voice cast blends in and, and they're chameleons in this movie because you know i wouldn't have known that this was lapita nyong'o she is so good as um as a robot like just yeah. being monotoned and then but there are still those little subtleties of emotion that she adds as as Roz learns and, and moves throughout the film so really appreciate that um i forget who the the bright bill sounded familiar it says kit connor i don't know who that is but he sounded familiar oh maybe the baby i don't know I thought Bright Bill sounded familiar, but I guess not. But my boy Mark Hamill is the bear in this. Mark Hamill, Mm. even though his uh, live action acting career kind of maybe petered off after Star Wars, his his voice acting roles have always been incredible from the Joker to uh, Fire Lord Ozai to now the bear in this movie. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, this is uh, his next best voice acting role next to the Joker. This is is, is his Mount Rushmore bear. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh yeah, I don't I don't honestly don't have much else to say about this film rather than it's really solid all around. I think if we're re- if I'm really going to complain and I feel like I feel like a, a Debbie Downer here, you know, <laughs> like a party pooper, but if I were to complain, I would probably and and why it doesn't take my top spot because I think of like my favorite animated films of all time right ratatouille is my favorite pixar film i love ratatouille uh, and and some other animated films lion king i think uh and, and even going into a lot of anime which is some of my anime favorite animated work of all animated works of all time but i i think the film was a little too safe a little mm, too familiar sure. for me. It, it was. It felt a little too by the books by the end of it, where although this is a really great film and a solid film all around, to take that top spot, in my opinion, it needs to be like... It, there needs to be a little bit something that I can grasp onto in a almost risque type not risque but, <laughs> um, <laughs> risky risk not, not, not risque um but like more of a risky risky approach something like something, original something hmm, new yeah something that might not feel so safe right you know and yeah. i don't mean in a subject matter i'm not saying you know that <laughs> that the bear is gonna start you know pole dancing or whatnot yeah. but uh you know st- you get what I'm saying. Yeah, you yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. just just something new, and I I would agree with that. Um, I think my like main gripes with this movie, and I say main gripes, like there's not that many. Um, I think in some moments, like when Bright Bill and Roz aren't really talking, but she's helping him learn to fly. They there's a line like after where it's like, oh, is it still awkward between you? But I didn't feel that awkwardness in that moment, and yeah. I feel there should have been more of those conversations after the mic drop of, oh, I accidentally killed your whole family before you were born and you're the only one that survived uh i feel like there should have been more conversations outside of that but i think the movie kind of brushed past that and i think because the movie is so emotionally charged and there are those moments that are hard to not feel emotional about i think some of those moments kind of get pushed to the side like oh well i still feel the emotions here it doesn't really matter that those moments didn't happen Hmm. um and i was a victim of it i mean you know the, the the tears were there they were there in yeah. the throat it was there hmm. and the movie got its claws in me um but looking back at it on a more critical 
sense i'm like mm, i feel like that should have been talked about more hmm. Hmm. yeah no i i agree with that actually because at that point in the film that line specifically and this feels so nitpicky but it is the truth because that line specifically felt awkward to me right because i thought they made up at yes. that point because they were like they were helping each other and this is really beautiful montage with uh i forget the i don't know the song that was playing at the time but it was an original song for from the soundtrack mm-hmm. and it's it, it, it at that point you're like oh they made up they're like they're like they're two peas in a pot right yeah. like but then she says that and i was like Wait, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that, I think, will do it for us. I, I'm contractually obligated to give a score here at Culture mm, Wave Media yeah. Network. Um, What would I give this? Um, I think, I know I've been singing it's crazy. I think an 8.5 feels good to me. Mm. I think a 9 would be if it was totally original, totally something groundbreaking or new in animation. But I think outside of that, I think it hits all of the right points. It has adult themes. It has child, you know, kids themes that kids can grab onto. Animation is beautiful. Um, Genre kind of pushing the genre forward. Uh, and yeah, it got, it got some emotion out of me. Oh yeah. So how about you? Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. It, it's an emotional and touching film. I'm going to give this a, a solid eight out of 10. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Well, that's been our review of the wild robot. You guys should definitely check this out. It's definitely worth your time. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a like and comment below if you love this movie as much as us or if you hated it as much as Vinny did. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and you can follow us on any of our social medias. Those will all be linked in the uh, the the thing, you know, the description. The uh, or or yeah. there will be a little bar right here that will say all of them. You can follow us there. We'd really appreciate it. And we're covering everything movies, TV, um, if you've watched it, we've probably covered it. So please go check out our other content. We would really appreciate it. Signing off, I'm Mark Iacobino. And I'm Vinny Albano. And we'll see you on the next one. This is The Culture.